good morning to all of you uh, hello everyone uh, in today's session uh, we are going to discuss about uh, uh, classes and availability of soil water basically when we uh, talk about the crop water water requirement actually there is a relation of or we can say there are the different types of the water so water present in the soil are mainly classified under three heads so those three heads are like hygroscopic water then capillary water and gravitational water actually it, these three terms are very important because uh, it is very useful to find out uh, like uh, when we calculate uh, what is the depth of the water or delta required for a particular crop uh, when we do the irrigation so uh, it is uh, again based on the type of the soil uh, texture of the soil uh, type of the crop but still there are the many terms that are very useful like all these terms are mentioned over here and we will see step by step so we will start from uh, this uh, uh, classes of the water so we'll start from the hygroscopic water so if you see uh, at this part, this particular layer in which uh, suppose open dried soil is there and whatever the moisture uh, if it is just uh, op kept open to the atmosphere and if it absorbs the water so uh, whatever the moisture is absorbed by this own dried soil that uh, moisture content we can call it as or that water we can call it as hygroscopic water so such a water is basically not available to the crop or the to the plant so that's why we also mention here that it is unavailable water because it is not available to the crop then the second type that we uh, that is capillary water so this uh, capillary water is basically uh, when uh, actually it is that part in excess of hygroscopic water which exists in the pore space of the soil by molecular attraction so if you see this capillary water it has the range from the field capacity up to the this particular point but uh, what is field capacity again we will discuss in detail so this uh, the some part of this water this capillary water is basically available to the plant so at left side you can see availability then the next term is gravitational water at top you can see this is also superfluous water basically it is uh, that part in excess of hygroscopic and capillary water which will move out of the soil if favorable drainage is provided like basically it will come out from the soil and uh, many a times what happens uh, it is above field capacity and then uh, uh, this water because of the gravitation and because of the we can say the large pores in the soil mainly in case of sandy soil so that water would get drained out so water is there but it will not be available directly to the plant so if you see like the balance case here is in this case only otherwise even if the large pores are there or the large quantity of the water is there it won't be available even this own dried soil which is very small quantity that is also not available so if we get a range this particular range then only it would be available to the crop that's why actually uh, it is very important to understand these terms next is actually there are the few more uh, terms like the next term is soil moisture tension and soil moisture stress so what is mean by soil moisture tension so basically the force per unit area that must be exerted in order to extract water from the soil is known as the soil moisture tension so when we say the force per, per unit area it means that basically the pressure okay so when we uh, whatever the pressure is needed to extract the water from the soil so that is nothing but the soil moisture tension and it can be expressed in terms of atmosphere atm so it is also known as capillary potential capillary tension or force of suction so soil moisture tension is basically inversely proportional to the moisture content of the soil of the given texture and structure so from this what we understand is as uh, as soil moisture content of the soil in increases then soil moisture tension decreases or vice versa 
so and how can we measure this basically by using various instrument like uh, suppose centrifuge or tensiometers these are the instrument by using which we can measure the soil moisture tension actually what we will do at the end of this particular video actually at in the given link uh, i will just provide the link to you uh, so link is provided through which you just click on that link and you will be able to solve quiz also so we'll add 5 to 10 questions so you can solve those questions so that you will have a revision also just after this particular session then uh, next term is soil moisture stress so what is mean by soil moisture stress it is basically the sum of the soil sum of the soil moisture tension and osmotic pressure of the soil solution now what is mean by osmotic pressure so osmotic pressure is the increase in the force or we can say tension caused by the salts present in the soil solution so the growth of plant basically depends on soil moisture and osmotic pressure so uh, we can also call it as a function of the uh, soil moisture stress so the so how uh, how can we define this the uh, uh, osmotic pressure that you know but the osmotic pressure of the soil solution should be maintained as low as possible uh, how can we maintain it low as possible as on the basis of like we need to do the leaching and through leaching we can uh, control it so that you know in this world actually if we get in appropriate amount then only it is sufficient even if you have apply lot of amount of water to the plant it doesn't mean that it will grow or it will produce high yield actually it should get optimum amount of water in the same way even if soil moisture uh, this osmotic pressure is too high or the salt content in the soil is too high then uh, it is not good for the plant actually there are the few more terms like uh, i will open here so these are the term like soil moisture constants so uh, the soil various soil moisture constants uh, are there like uh, saturation capacity field capacity permanent wilting point available moisture readily available moisture moisture equivalent and soil moisture deficiency so we will discuss uh, uh, one by one we will start with the saturation capacity so basically what is mean by saturation capacity will open this figure again actually it will help us to understand in a better way what is mean by uh, what are the different constants moisture constants so saturation capacity is basically it is also called as maximum moisture holding capacity or total capacity so uh, it is the amount of water required to fill all the pore spaces between the soil particles by replacing all air held in pore spaces actually uh, uh, as in the in other subjects also in geotech or other subject also when we discuss about the soil actually uh, there are the soil uh, there are the pores present in the soil and uh, generally it is filled by air and when that is uh, filled with the water all the pores are when filled with the water then we can call it as a that is what is maximum moisture holding capacity or we can say the total capacity or saturation capacity and actually uh, upper limit of possible moisture content is very important because uh, it will help us actually the soil moisture capacity is nothing but the upper limit of the possible moisture content so when the porosity of the soil is known the saturation saturation capacity we can calculate like if we take a simple example suppose uh, you, uh, many a times what happens we focus more on the examples or the numericals or problems but uh, these terms are very important because if we if, if our, our concepts are clear then only we can solve the numericals very easily like so for example if the porosity is 50 percent by volume so and the moisture in each meter of saturated soil would be equivalent to what depth so that we can calculate very easily it means that if we know the porosity which is 50 percent so 50 percent multiply by uh, per meter depth we want suppose one meter depth is there and for one meter depth how much is the saturation uh, so that we can find out so how like uh, 0.50 that is 50 percent multiply by one meter so 
अराउंड पॉइंट फाइव मीटर इक्वल टू फिफ्टी सेंटीमीटर सो वी कैन कैलक्युलेट वेरी इजीली सो द फिफ्टी परसेंट इज इज सैचुरेटेड सो फिफ्टी सेंटीमीटर डेप्थ इज सैचुरेटेड सो इन दिस वे फ्रॉम दिस पोरोसिटी वी कैन कैलक्युलेट वेरी इजीली दिस इज अनादर टर्म एक्चुअली दिस टर्म इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दिस इज फील्ड कैपेसिटी सो आई विल जस्ट हाईलाइट दिस पर्टिक्युलर फील्ड कैपेसिटी इन दिस सेम फिगर ओनली सो दैट इवन वी कैन हाईलाइट विद द हाईलाइटर ऑल्सो आई विल जस्ट सिलेक्ट द हाईलाइटर सो दिस इज फील्ड कैपेसिटी actually with highlighter it is not visible so better we can just tick it yes now i just wish to show you that the field capacity is exactly at what level so here the field capacity is basically at this particular point i'll just show you what is that point yes so this is the point but i need to select pen okay now i can mark you that level so this is the point so this is the field capacity point so uh, from bottom up to the uh, this particular point from bottom up to this particular point this uh, this entire or this level we can call it as a field capacity now how can we define this field capacity is the most important thing so basically this field capacity is the moisture content of the soil after free drain has after free drainage has removed most of the gravity water so what does it mean basically uh, when as at top you can see this is gravitational water so the water which will come out from the soil but it will drain so again it is not useful for uh, plant directly so uh, if we just remove this particular part then whatever the moisture which is available freely to the plant plant is called as field capacity the so field capacity is very important term then the next term is permanent wilting point this is this you can see okay so the permanent wilting point or wilting coefficient we can see so what does it mean basically uh permanent wilting point or the wilting coefficient is that water content at which plants can no longer extract sufficient water from the soil for its growth like if you see this is a wilting point and from this top if we go downward actually it is very difficult for the plant to extract such water when we go downward and this top one is not available to the plant as it drains out it goes with the gravity and uh, this is the point so after this point plant will not be able to extract water from this particular soil so this is the wilting point actually uh, this permanent wilting for the wilting coefficient basically plant uh, starts dying after this particular point so because plant can't extract water up after this particular point then the next term is actually there are the two more sub terms in the temporary uh, in the permanent wilting point the next term is temporary wilting so what is mean by temporary wilting okay so the uh, there is one more sub term called as temporary wilting which comes under permanent wilting point only two terms actually these are the different from permanent uh, wilting point temporary wilting or ultimate wilting what is mean by temporary wilting temporary wilting may term sometimes take place uh, during what uh, day but the plant will recover in the cooler portion of the day like in, a, in the same day even you can observe that uh, uh, at uh, in early morning or in the evening when there is uh, we can call it as a cooler portion of the day so plant gets an opportunity uh, to maintain or to recover so no addition of water is required 
Thus, temporary wilting may take place during the hot summer day. And even when soil moisture is higher than the wilting coefficient because of increased transpiration rate. So, this is temporary wilting. What is meant by wilting? Ultimate wilting. This ultimate wilting is different from permanent wilting point. So, it is just uh, uh, when ultimate wilting uh, occurs, the plant will not regain its turgidity even after the addition of sufficient water to the soil and the plant will die. The moisture tension at ultimate wilting point is as high as 60 atmosphere. Basically, when the pressure uh, or we can say the moisture tension, soil moisture tension comes to up to the 60 atmosphere and in that case, uh, even we, if we add or provide the water, plant will not get covered and it dies. Okay, so it is the last stage basically and uh, this permanent wilting point is also, this ultimate wilting point is also known as hygroscopic coefficient and uh, this ultimate wilting point or the hygroscopic coefficient is about two-third of permanent wilting point. So, this uh, ultimate wilting point is two-third of permanent wilting point. Next term is available moisture. So, it is very easy like from this uh, figure we can understand very easily this is available water or available moisture so this is field capacity level minus uh, this is wilting coefficient will get the available water so it is simply the difference in the water content of the soil between the field capacity and permanent wilting point the next term the next term is uh, readily available moisture it is slightly different different from available moisture like uh, it is that portion of the available moisture uh, that is mostly that is uh, easily extracted by plants and it is approximately 75 percent of the available moisture so if we just uh, if we get a particular quantity x quantity as available moisture simply multiply it by 0.75 so we may get readily readily means easily available moisture for the plant then um, uh, moisture equivalent so the next term is moisture equivalent so this moisture equivalent is basically equal to the field capacity so which is 1.8 to 2 permanent wilting point so again in the other way also we can define it as a 2.7 that is one factor multiplied by hygroscopic coefficient so we can get a moisture equivalent because this is an artificial moisture property of the soil and it is used as an index of the natural properties. So, it is the percentage of the moisture retained in a small sample of wet soil, say 1 cm deep, uh, when subjected to the centrifugal force 1000 times as great as gravity. So, usually for a period of 30 minutes, moisture equivalent is used as a single factor to, uh, to which the property of the soil can be related within a reasonable limits. Uh, and that's why actually I have mentioned the term like soil moisture equivalent can be equal to the field capacity and which is equal to 1.8 to 2 permanent wilting point or the same it is 2.7 hygroscopic coefficient. Then the last term is about uh, soil moisture deficiency. Now from the deficiency word only you can understand like soil moisture defi deficiency or field moisture deficiency is the water required to bring the soil moisture content of the soil to its field capacity okay so this is a field capacity and uh, water required to bring the soil moisture content to this particular level is called as soil moisture deficiency so it is basically whatever the water is needed so in this way uh, actually we have discussed all these terms uh, in the same video below i have just put a link uh, by using